Hello fellow gamers, I'm Christopher Christman of Retro Game Network, and coming up next, a look at last week's retro video game news on the RGN Files for the week ending Saturday, May 18, 2019. Before we begin this week's podcast, we wanted to take a moment to apologize for the lack of website ability that occurred about a week ago and lasted for over one week. Due to a domain situation beyond our control, our site was not accessible for about two weeks. We have been able to get the site back up and running, and we thank everybody for their patience and for reaching out to us during our time of outage. In the RGN Files this week, the father of video games, Ralph Baer, has been memorialized in the city of Manchester in New Hampshire with a new statue that has been dedicated in his honor. Born on March 8, 1922 in Germany, Baer was self-taught and later formally educated in the field of electronics, where he would eventually come up with the concept of the home video game console. With just $2,500 and the help of two other engineers, the final outcome of this concept was known as the Brown Box, the world's first home video game prototype. In an interview before his death, Bear had said that within 15 minutes, quote, every examiner on the floor of the building that was in that office wanted to play the game, end quote. The brown box was later sold commercially as the Magnavox Odyssey, selling over 350,000 units when it was debuted in 1971. The console ended up being the beginning of the medium that we know of today. Bear was honored with the statue in the city of Manchester just over a week ago, where the statue was unveiled in Arms Park, now known as Bear Square. In attendance were over a dozen family members, including children and grandchildren. Vera died of natural causes on December 6, 2014, at the age of 92. Sega has unveiled the next 10 games that are slated to be included on their upcoming Sega Genesis mini console. Sega will be taking advantage of the mini flashback console marketplace, in which other companies such as Nintendo and Sony have already found success with similar devices. The console will include a total of 40 games from the company's 16-bit library, in which the buyer will receive the console alongside of one or two controllers that, depending on your region, will include either three or six button capability. Powered by micro USB, the system will support HDMI with a 720p resolution output, and will also offer a Save Anywhere feature. The next wave of 10 games have been announced by Sega, making a total of 30 out of the 40 games being officially unveiled. The games mentioned for the next wave are as follows. Alex Kidd and the Enchanted Castle, Beyond Oasis, Ghouls and Ghosts, Golden Axe, Mega Man The Wily Wars, Fantasy Star 4, Sonic Spinball, Street Fighter 2 Special Championship Edition, Vector Man, and Wonder Boy in Monster World. The Sega Genesis Mini Classic is slated for release on September 19th of this year and will retail for as low as under $60. Independent video game developer Champ Games has officially announced their upcoming port of the arcade classic Galaga to be released for the Atari 2600 platform for the very first time. Originally released by Namco and Midway back in 1981, it is the sequel of the 1979 arcade title Galaxian. While the game was ported to a variety of video game consoles and computers, such as Sega's SG-1000, the Famicom Disk System, and MSX computer systems during its initial popularity, an Atari 2600 port was never released. It had been previously assumed that the game was unable to be ported due to its severe complexity. The new port is the product of John Champau on coding, Nathan Strum on graphics, and Ross Keenum on music. The announcement of the upcoming port was made during a live Twitch broadcast from the Zero Page Homebrew earlier this week. According to Champ Games, the upcoming Galaga port is approximately 95% completed. Previous games released by the development team have been published physically, with Atari Age being responsible for distribution and sales. There is currently no word on exactly when the game would be made available for purchase, and a playable demo is planned to be offered in the near future. KN Games has announced a new game for the NES called Any Escape, which will bring a unique title to the retro platform. Any Escape brings the latest craze of escape rooms and ports the real-life experience to the video game world. The game, which began planning last September, is the work of Kevin Hanley, Kendall Howard, and John Pianak, as well as Travis Nelson. The game was shown at MAGFest last January and officially completed last March. Any Escape forces you to exit an escape room by solving a variety of logical puzzles and various types of key locks. 
One interesting feature of the game is the ability to play the title using an SNES mouse with an optional adapter. This marks the first time that a mouse-driven game was developed for the 8-bit platform. Unlike other Keihan games, the group has turned to Kickstarter to obtain funding for the creation of all physical product. Complete versions start with a pledge of $60 or $80, depending on whether or not you want the adapter for SNES mouse capability. Other collections are also available that will offer additional product, such as posters as well as soundtracks. Already fully funded, the Kickstarter ends on June 14th of this year, with product to begin shipping this coming September. And finally this week, Tato has teamed up with 612 Entertainment to develop a brand new board game adaption of the classic title Space Invaders. It has been created as a way of celebrating the 40th anniversary of the series using the moniker of 40 Years of Invading. Space Invaders was first released in 1978, with dozens of home ports being developed over the decades. The Atari 2600 port of the game from 1980 is often described as the very first existence of what is now known as a killer app. The board game combines the card deck building genre with a traditional strategy game and is playable by up to four people. The visual presentation was created to mimic the original arcade title as much as possible using a non-video based medium. Two versions of the game are currently being offered for pre-order, including a standard $30 edition that features the game with all required tokens, box and manual, while a deluxe $75 version offers the same as the original version, however using higher quality acrylic and premium cardstock for all included items. The Kickstarter, which started last week, has already been completely funded, and the product is scheduled to begin shipping by December of this year. That's it for this week's edition of the RGN Files. This is a reminder that our official radio program, VGM on FM, will return to WRML Radio this coming June. Stay tuned for further details. For complete details of any of this week's stories, visit RetroGameNetwork.com. And don't forget to check us out on our social media outlets, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at RetroGame Network, and on Twitter and Twitch at RetroGameNet. For the RGN Files, I'm Christopher Christman. This week's news story is provided by the following. The Atari Age Forums, The Boston Globe, Champ Games, The Concord Monitor, Funstock Retro, Granite Geek, Kahan Games, Union Leader, VentureBeat, Zero Page Homebrew.